FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Financial Survival Network is brought to you today by Orin Resources, a junior exploration company with the appetite of a major. It's hot on the trail of the next globally significant discovery, creating enormous potential upside for you, the shareholder. Orin is one of the most aggressive exploration companies pursuing high-grade, scalable gold and copper deposits and has a premier seven-project portfolio, including its two flagships, Committee Bay in the Arctic and Sombrero in Peru. Orin's unparalleled technical team and highly experienced management has a history of success in advancing and monetizing exploration assets. No wonder Orin's been called one of the best in the junior exploration sector. Orin trades on the TSX and the NYSE under AUG. To learn more, go to orinresources.com. That's A-U-R-Y-N resources.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is April 17th, and that's the year of our Lord 2019. Well, hey, the Mueller report is coming out tomorrow, which means if you understand why timing, how timing works in Washington, it means that there's nothing in that report of any consequence or damage to President Trump, because if there were, it would have been released on a late Friday afternoon, much the same way the report was submitted and the investigation closed down by Mueller on a Friday afternoon. That's all you need to know. And look, uh, we'll get into the Mueller report in a little bit. If you've got an opinion about it, you want to be heard, send us an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. All of the good ones get read on air. I'm catching up now, up to about 80, 80 in the queue. Yours will be next, I promise. So just uh, just send it off. You know, it's the best part of my day when I kick back at an undisclosed leftist slanting coffee shop in Northern Palm Beach County and read your emails every morning. It is the best part of my day. So send it off to kl at kerrylutz.com. Getting back to the Mueller report or Inspector Clouseau part two, what really came of it? What do we know about it? And is it just the fix is in or is Trump orange man bad and we have to get him no matter what? Well, we're really pleased and excited to have a new guest on the show who can bring you a totally new perspective, uh, retired Judge John H. Wilson from uh, back from my home state of New York. And Judge Wilson, uh, welcome to the show and Mueller Report. What do you expect to see in that report when it's released tomorrow besides a lot of different colors? Well, I think you've got it right. Um, you're not going to see anything of substance after more than two years of investigation, uh, the bar letter shows clearly that the report has absolutely no evidence, absolutely no evidence, absolutely nothing. Uh, it's a nothing burger. Russian collusion with the campaign. Hey, it's a nothing burger. So look, I'm going to take the opposite end, but we know Trump is evil and Trump is the Antichrist. He's Hitler. And all Barr is doing is just covering up for him because Mueller had the goods and they were ready to indict him, but then Barr shut the report down. What do you say to that line of reasoning or non-reasoning as it may be? If I'm going to play devil's advocate and pretend I'm with the prior administration, then uh, it's not going to be a Russian collusion angle that they're going to pursue next. The issue is going to come in the obstruction of justice portion of the report. Because if you recall the bar letter, uh, the Bueller report uh, says that there isn't any um, basis for Mueller to go forward with an indictment of the president on the issue of obstruction of justice. But he did not say there wasn't evidence of any such obstruction. Uh, the bar report just indicates that the Justice Department feels there isn't sufficient, and that's the key word, sufficient evidence 
for obstruction of justice charges and have indicated that they don't have any intention of pursuing charges of that nature. That'll be where okay, uh, the Democrats in Congress. All right. Uh, One act. lawyer to another, though. You know how this works. The, the prosecutor doesn't say, we've investigated this guy. He's totally innocent and uh, no charges should, could or should be brought. Not the way it works. It's really a question of prosecutorial discretion. And the fact is that if there's no reason to prosecute, then there's no reason to prosecute. He doesn't have to spell it out. But Rod Rosenstein, who appointed Mueller, and maybe he was held at gunpoint and forced to sign off on the bar letter, said there is no uh, grounds to prosecute for obstruction of justice. Right? Correct? Well, that's right. That's the circular nature of this. If there is no collusion, then there's nothing to obstruct. So there wouldn't be any evidence of obstruction because there's nothing to obstruct. So a prosecutor, and having been a prosecutor in one of my past lives, I know, you don't ever find the defendant innocent. That's never how our system works. But you do state there is insufficient evidence to go forward with the prosecution. The, The bar report lays it out, or the bar letter lays it out pretty plainly that you can't prosecute somebody for obstructing something that wasn't a crime in the first place. Right. But you could get uh, caught up as certain individuals did for lying to the FBI, lying to prosecutors, and you could wind up in a world of trouble, even though the underlying matter was not criminal but you impeded the investigation reminds me of guys who like get wrongly convicted of a crime tossed in jail. Then they're getting assaulted by a fellow inmate and they kill them. And then they get convicted for of murder. uh, Even though it's self-defense, they get convicted. Then their underlying conviction, they find out it was the wrong guy. Joe blow did it. And then they're faced with the thing. Well, we convicted him of murder, but if we hadn't convicted him of murder, in the first place, wrongly, he wouldn't be in jail to have, if we hadn't convicted him of the underlying crime wrongly, he wouldn't be in jail now to have killed another inmate. What do you do? Well, honestly, I don't know why anybody would ever speak to the FBI voluntarily or any law enforcement organization. I mean, that's my, that's my view of it. And I advise <laughs> clients for many years, you have nothing to gain by talking to law enforcement. I, I often told people you have a right under the First Amendment use it. You have another right under the Fourth Amendment, use it. Fifth Amendment, use yeah. those rights. Don't mm-hmm. talk to the police. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, if you've watched any cop show for more than 15 minutes, you see the guy says, I want my lawyer. They lawyer up, as the saying goes, which is your constitutional mm-hmm. right. Why any person who's ever watched a cop show, and that's pretty much the entire population of the country, would talk to a cop or let the, submit to a voluntary search or you know, let them search your car is just insanity to me. And yet, you know what, Judge? It's done every day of the week, multiple times. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I've seen the videos from the, uh, from the cams that the officers wear now. And you know, so often officers are accused of lying. And they're not. The, the people do voluntarily consent to these searches. Sometimes they've legitimately forgotten what's in their vehicle and don't remember that there's drugs there. Uh, other times they think they can talk their way out of trouble with a good story, not realizing they're just mm-hmm. digging their hole deeper. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a, a terrible problem that people have with thinking that they're going to talk their way out of this trouble. You've seen now the FBI has questioned a group of people who were involved in this Russian collusion investigation and only indicted them for lying to the FBI. After this, I don't know why anybody would ever cooperate with the FBI. Yeah, I I think it's insane. Uh, I interviewed uh, George Papadopoulos, or as I call him, George Papadopoulos. And, you know, this guy was set up. Oh, you know what I love, Judge? You're pretty cynical. You're a cynical New Yorker like myself. Christopher Steele. Have you ever read his name in a paper on, on an, in an article where they didn't say the former spy, ex-spy Christopher Steele. You know what? I want to see his retirement papers. I want to see the pension checks from the English government. And you know, you know that like old spies never die, 
right? And they're always, yeah. always subject to uh, being called back into service and then go back to Mission Impossible. And should any of your IMF team be, uh, you know, caught or killed, the secretary will disavow all knowledge of your existence, which is exactly what that term implies, correct? Oh, yes. I don't know what his status is with his uh, former government employers, but I do know that he was hired, like any private detective, to do a job. He, he mm -hmm. did his job. He handed in the dossier. What was done with it after he hands it in? That's not his concern. So I've, I've never thought of Christopher Steele as someone to blame in this whole process. He's doing the job he was hired Contractor, to do. But the people who took his work yeah. and misused it are the ones mm -hmm. to blame here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, but the fact is, uh, you see that you you cannot read Christopher Steele without saying ex spy retired spy, and that sends off my alarm bells immediately. I think the Australian government was involved, the government of the UK, and you know, like once you're in, it's just like when you're in the mob. There's no such thing as retiring from the mob. There's no such thing as being a retired spy. And to me, the fact that they got to go out of their way every time to say he's retired is alarm bells going off in my head. But hey, so Papadopoulos, he's set up. Carter Page is an FBI plant. We almost know this for sure because in 2016, he testified for the FBI. So FBI doesn't have assets, but they have sources. He might have even been an official uh, undercover FBI agent. But again, nobody's talking about that. So do you think that Barr is going to go try to drain, drain the swamp here and really go after the people that attempted the coup of, of President Trump? And can Trump afford personally, professionally, his family to not go after these people and declare out and out war? I would love nothing more than to see A.G. Barr go forward with a full investigation of those responsible for lying to the FISA court and seize and getting those warrants under those false pretenses. I can't imagine that the FISA court itself hasn't been concerned or expressed their concern about the fraud that was perpetrated on that court in getting those search warrants. But uh, A.G. Barr looks like he's a, a man of goodwill. Uh, he's thrown down the gauntlet by saying he believes that there was spying going on and calling it spying. I can only hope that he is of goodwill and goes forward with that prosecution. You know, I remember when uh, James Comey gave that press conference and exonerated Hillary Clinton, oh. and his comment was, no responsible prosecutor would bring these charges. Mm -hmm. I remember he rarely oh, yeah. on TV saying, yes, yes, I would. And I know plenty who would. That was yeah. a fraud in and of itself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're so right. You know, it was just, that was a complete fraud. You know, Comey has proven himself to be a complete liar. And all of them, Brennan, Clapper, they're hard to take serious anyway. These were, these were look, C students run the world. Uh, B students, uh, uh, you know, are executives and A students work for the C students. This guy was a D minus student, Brennan. Same with Clapper. They were all D minus students. They got gentlemen's D minuses. And these guys should never have been running agencies the magnitude of what they were doing. It was purely a question of Woody Allen saying 90% of life is showing up. That's all these guys ever did in their lives was show up. They didn't have a, they didn't have an independent free thought in their, uh, in their gray matter here, judge. Well, how Comey has not been prosecuted for his admitted leaks is beyond me. He had flat out admitted that he yeah. wanted to leak some information to the public and that rather than do it himself, he got a friend to do it for him, yeah. <laughs> which is the same thing. So how right. on earth that has not been prosecuted yet is what, beyond me. And what about like, McCabe? Much of, much of this is beyond me. How, how Hillary Clinton could not have been yeah. prosecuted for her crimes, and I don't stint in calling them just that, crimes, yeah. is further beyond me. Hey, it was the Clinton Crime Family Factory, that foundation. Totally. <laughs> Just totally. oh, you'll notice how they're not getting any more donations. Oh, I it's sent. Not like, no, uh, wait a the, second. The foundation is continuing to collect money. I once sent she's them no a donation. Secretary of State or President. Yeah. Nobody gives her a dollar. Oh well, I didn't give her a dollar, but I did 
send her my old used underwear because maybe she can, <laughs> con maybe she'll contribute that to goodwill and get a tax write off. Right. <laughs> she, if, if anybody would, those criminals <laughs> she's would. done it. Remember when they went into office and uh, the extent of their contributions was uh, Bill's old underwear. And I hope it was seriously fumigated in, uh, and put under ultraviolet light just to kill off whatever was there. But that's a story for another day. So bar yeah. report off tomorrow. Uh, what do you think your favorite color in the report will be? <laughs> the, those black bars across the <laughs> jury testimony that must remain secret. Uh, you know, I just recently wrote an article that came out today at the USA uh, government mm -hmm. uh, website, USA Government and Policy. And uh, in that article, I explained that there is a legal way to get the grand jury information that the Democrats could try. And in fact, it's available to any person who wants to get this information. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you'll be successful is an entirely different question, <laughs> but there is a legal process that can be employed to get those grand jury minutes and those testimonies that people want to see. Hey, and you know, the thing that we, we went wrong on judge was that we didn't advertise a copy of the Miller report up on Amazon with key insights <laughs> and unredacted portions, the entire one. I mean, because who the heck knows what, what, they're going to come up with. So we could have said anything. We could have said, you know, it will have a picture of the mattress that uh, Trump supposedly urinated in or on in Russia, along with the uh, full length, the uh, unredacted photos of the prostitutes that he hired. We could have sold a fortune in these things, Judge. Oh, yes. Well, I'll make a prediction on what you are going to see in the Mueller report and what the Democrats will hang their hats on. Yeah. You will see uh, a series of um, a series of evidence regarding what would have constituted obstruction charges. You'll see a series of incidents uh, involving either statements by the president, statements from people in his uh, organization that could have been construed as obstruction were there, a, were there something to obstruct. And the, you'll, you will see fellows like Nadler and uh, people in Congress, Democrats, all making a series of comments regarding those uh, regarding those pieces of evidence and saying this is what's going to support us in, in bringing impeachment mm -hmm. charges against the president. We believe that these are crimes and should be impeached. And I also can predict that no, that will go nowhere. nowhere. Absolutely nowhere no. because they won't be crimes. Hey, I hate the term nothing burger because I've never been, I, I, I love burgers and I mm. eat out regularly. And I've never seen a restaurant with a nothing burger on its menu. So it's kind of an alien concept because a burger is chopped up a uh, cow, chuck, chuck or sirloin or whatever they make it from the Kobe beef. Right. You know, you name it. They've got designer burgers coming out the wazoo, but you know, nothing burger. It's just such a stupid term here. The fact is the entire report is just a negative. It's a nothing I guess a nothing burger, Judge. I'm running out of terms here. Help me out. No, it's uh, just how Shakespeare described it. A lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And that will be the funny thing. So, hey, fellow New Yorker, one to the other, Judge, where do we find your work? How do we connect with you on the web? Um, you can connect with me at uh, a company called First Court. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a mediation specialist with them. And I also do some jury research work as well. Um, Firstcourt.com is uh, where you'd find me. You'd see my uh, description of myself as one of their neutrals. Um, you can also look for me on uh, Amazon, amazon.com. I have uh, a children's book that I wrote oh, really? three years back called Hot House Flowers. And it's a, uh, it addresses the problem of illegal immigration. And All of right. course, it caused the stir and a controversy because God forbid anybody should speak out on a topic like that. But it's available there for the public. Hey, well, I'm writing a book right now, and it's called uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Bellevue. So maybe you could uh, go and review that for me when it comes out. I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've toyed with this book for 20 years, Judge, but I just don't want to get uh, labeled as uh, anti-feminist and anti-woman and chauvinist. Pig, male chauvinist pig, sure. but 
At some point, the book There's is going to write itself. There's always an update on the material, I'm sure. Oh, it's never ending. Never ending. Anyway, Judge, thank you so much for being on. Hey, by the way, guys, email us, kl at kerrylutz.com. Give us your Mueller take. We really want to hear it. And while you're at it, Take a look at the website, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Hey, you're listening to this on a podcast, YouTube, whatever platform. Subscribe to it, like it, and share it. Really helps me a lot when you do this. Helps get these ideas out there. They're actively being suppressed by the huge digital media con- conglomeration or uh, from a book I once uh, read called Confederacy of Dunces, The Power of the Combine has lined up against free thought, against critical thought. The only way these ideas can get out of this echo chamber here is for you to help spread them. So do that. Subscribe, like, and share. Judge, it's been a total pleasure. We will definitely be talking to you again. Good luck out there in uh, out west, wherever you are. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for having me. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.